As a long time user of WordPress, I do like to keep everything streamlined and simple where possible. I like to minimize the need to keep updating all the plugins and have lots of things installed when I don't need to. This will optimize both security, the update process, and just make my life a little easier. And if you want to follow along and do the same kind of thing, I'm gonna give you a handful of tips on how you can achieve that very, very easily. So let's start off with the first tip. Now, if you are building WordPress websites, chances are you are going to go a little bit beyond the basics and include plugins like custom post type UI, ACF, and things like that to create custom post types, meta fields, and things along those lines. Well, you don't necessarily want to have that plugin installed once you've set everything up, and you may want to just sort of remove it. Well, you can do that with a range of different tools, and today we're going to check out how you can do it with CPT UI as the first example. So what I've done is I've got a custom post type UI, which is a free plugin. I've got it installed, and if we take a look inside there, I've created created a new taxonomy and my taxonomy is just basically called new taxonomies how inventive and you can see if we come over to the posts I've got a new taxonomy inside there which is called new taxonomies if we disable this plugin that would immediately disappear and we obviously don't want to do that but we don't necessarily want to have the plugin installed once we set everything up so what we can do is we can come over to the import export taxonomies option and from there we have get code if we choose that you can see we can grab all of the custom post type UI taxonomies. If we created more than one, we don't want to do it for every single one. We can simply copy the code from here. In this example, I've only actually created one. So I'm going to keep it really simple and just grab this little block of code. So you can just highlight it, copy it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a free plugin called Code Snippets to be able to put this content in. So let's hop over to the Code Snippets plugin. And you can see I've already created the new taxonomy. So that's already ready for us to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into our plugins before we enable this into our install plugins and we're going to disable custom post type UI. Once we disable that, come to posts, you can see we no longer have our new taxonomies taxonomy in there. But if we come back into code snippets, go to all our snippets and enable this, We'll see now if we come back to posts, there's our new taxonomies. We can click inside and start adding taxonomies in. Pretty cool. But you're probably thinking now, but Paul, you literally just installed one plugin to remove another plugin. That really isn't very intuitive. And you're absolutely right. However, with a tool like Code Snippets, what you can do with this is you can test everything out by using the Code Snippets plugin or another one if you want to. This allows you to test them out, make sure everything works in conjunction with each other and you're happy with everything. And then you can take that exact same code that you've inserted into your custom code snippet. For example, this new taxonomy code. And then you can put that into the function.php file, which is part of your child theme. This means then that you can move everything over there and you can disable and delete code snippets. And that's one less plugin to handle. Pretty simple and it's an easy way of testing things out because if anything goes wrong, you can just turn it off and carry on working. Pretty cool. Now, continue on along the same kind of theme. Let's just say you don't even want to go to the time and effort of installing something along the lines of custom post type UI, but you still want that functionality to grab the code. There's a couple of ways you could handle it. You can have a donor site where you set things up and run on there, but that's a little bit too much work. What you could also do is use an online generator site like WP Turbo. And there are other ones out there. This is, again, a totally free service. There are paid plans and so on, but I'm only going to show you the free versions. You'll see we've got this generators section at the top. If we open this up, you can see we've got post type generators, taxonomy generators, menu generators, scroll underneath WordPress admin generators, block theme generates, you get the idea. There's a bunch of generators on this website. So we could easily come into something along the lines of the post type generator, and then we can go through and fill out everything we need, just following along with all these different options. It's very similar to what you'd see inside a, a tool like ACF or CPT UI or any of those kinds of tools. You simply go through, fill in the relevant information, and once you finish with everything, you'll have this little block of code. You can simply copy that to your clipboard, you could go back into your code snippets plugin, add a new snippet in, give it a name, drop your code in, making sure that you don't have any duplicates for things like the PHP. Then again, like we've seen before, you can choose where to run this for the front end, only the back end, administration, you know, all that kind of options. Save your changes and activate, and you'll then have your new custom post type. And we now have our new post type called items. So you can see how easy it is to do that. And again, like I said, you can use the same principle. Once you're happy, you can transfer that over to your functions.php file. Let me show you how to do that a second, though, before we move on to the next tip. Now, for this example, I'm using InstaWP because I want to test things out before I actually publish this. This is a great service. If you want to find out more about it, I've got some videos. I'll link in the description down below. We're going to open the options up for more actions, and I'm going to come into Tools, and I'm going to go into the Code Editor. 
Then all you need to do is come into the options for inside WP content, open up the themes folder, making sure that you have a child theme installed. You simply come into the child theme folder and inside there you're looking for the functions.php file. All you need to do is open that up, scroll right to the bottom and just drop in that little bit of code, all those chunks of code, whatever you want, drop those inside here, save it, and then test your website. The nice thing with doing like this is if you make a mistake, you could just wipe out everything and you can start again. So what I would recommend is do it one at a time to make sure you don't have any issues. And if you do have an issue, you can easily fault find where the issue is and then deal with that little block of code just to make sure everything is working fine. It's easier than chucking everything in there, including the kitchen sink, and then trying to figure out what the hell is going on when things don't work. Then once you finish, save the file and you should be good to go. Now next up, one of the other things that we regularly do if our site isn't as fast as we'd like it to be is to start installing extra plugins, things like WP Rocket and things like that. Well, before you go to the time of doing that and the expense of doing it because you have to pay for a license, I would recommend you take a look at your hosting company and see what they actually offer. For example, I've just logged into my hosting account and this is not sponsored or anything else. You can use whatever hosting account you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply go and choose my websites. And from there, you can see these are the websites I have on my various different plans. So I'm going to choose the cloud professional hosting and I'm going to go into the manage option. Now, taking a look at the left hand side, we've got a couple of different things here that we can take a look at. First of all, we can come into the performance option and we can take a look at what performance options we actually have. In this example, the CDN or Content Delivery Network is part of my account. Now, you're not going to have this every way. You may have other things like Lightspeed or you may have access to Cloudflare. There's lots of different options you may have. Again, check out the documentation that comes with your hosting. Contact the hosting support and ask them what options are available if you're not that comfortable. But for example, I can come into the CDN and I can make sure that that is enabled on the site that I'm working on or the site that I'm running to make sure that wherever I am in the world or wherever anybody is in the world, they're going to be getting the best experience. Is this the best way of working? Well, it depends on the hosting company and the quality of their CDN and their kind of options for speeding things up. But it's definitely a good starting point to test out and see what improvements you can get before you then take a look at adding extra scripts, extra plugins and so on, which you have to manage, maintain and pay for moving forward. Now, another thing we tend to do is install little plugins that do little jobs, but we may install lots of them. Things like duplicating posts, being able to reorder posts, changing the way that our login looks, you know, all manner of different things. Maybe you want to take a look at something like admin and site enhancements. There's a free version and a pro or premium version, but the free version gives you so much. And what it can do is you can get a lot of that functionality you may be using multiple plugins for in one single plugin. That's only one plugin to update and maintain, which makes life considerably easier. Now, I'm not going to go through everything that is offered inside the admin and site enhancement. And this is the free version, by the way, this is not the pro version. But I'm going to just give you some information. You can see how you could replace so many different plugins. So for example, if you want to duplicate content, you've got this option to enable it, your content order, media replacement, SVG uploading. But you also got things like you want to tweak the admin interface, you want to clean up the admin bar, great if you want to hand this off to a client. Things like hide the admin bar, wider admin bar, organize the actual menu structure, enhance your lists, you log in and log out, you want to customize this, change your login URL, great for security if you want to make it a little bit more difficult for people to find out what your actual admin is for your site. You log in, log out menu, you can have a last login column so you can track the last time anybody logged into your website. There's so many options inside you, including custom code, so you don't need to use something like a code snippets plugin to add in something as simple as your analytics code into your header or your footer or whatever you kind of want. You can manage your robots text. You can disable various different components like comments and so on. There's security options inside here. So for example, if you want to limit the number of login attempts before someone is blocked, you can do that from here. Enable it, open the options up, configure it, job done. Optimizations, you want to control what images can be uploaded. The heartbeat controls part of WordPress. And finally, you have utilities. So you can handle things like email delivery. So you don't need to put SMTP plugin inside. You can do it directly inside you. Multiple user roles, view admin as role. There's so many different things, including maintenance modes. So many great little options inside this free plugin that you could just do away with tons of other plugins and therefore 
less to maintain and update. Now the final tip I'm going to give you is choosing a good solid theme if you're going down the route of using a theme. For example, if you want to set up a WooCommerce store, there's going to be lots of other options you're probably going to want to include, things like sizing charts, variation options, all manner of different things. When it comes to using things like that, you generally tend to have to put in additional plugins, and you may end up with five or six different plugins to do all the things that you want. Choosing a good solid theme on the onset, and you will tend to find a lot of these will include that functionality as part of the actual theme itself. For example, Bloxy 2.0, when that comes out, includes so many great options when it comes to working with your kind of content inside WooCommerce, you can do away with a bunch of plugins. The same thing goes if you want to add in custom post types, custom meta information, custom fields, and so on. There's a great support inside the pro version to be able to add all of that in, including custom meta fields. So if you want to create something more complicated than the standard setup, but maybe not as complex as starting from scratch with everything clean to use something like bricks or elements or something like that, check out, take a look at something like Bloxy. Now, this is one of my favorite themes, but there are so many other great options out there that have all these options directly built in, so you don't need to have so many other plugins installed. And that's a bunch of different ways in which you can optimize and streamline your whole WordPress website, reducing reliance upon so many plugins and so many other great ways of moving forward. Check some of the options out that I've linked in the description. I'll also link some videos inside there that give you even more resources to take a look at to minimize your use of plugins and all those other kinds of options. But as always, I'd love to get your feedback. Drop your comments in the comment section below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.